Hello, future Boilermakers, and welcome to our live Q&A broadcast about the School of Engineering Technology at Purdue University. Congratulations to our student viewers who have been admitted to the majors with engineer, within engineering technology. Uh, no small task. My name is Rebecca Yoder, Associate Director of Recruitment and Diversity here at Polytechnic. Um, we have both professors and current students here with us right now. We have an all-star panelist and more will be joining us in an hour. You can submit your questions via YouTube chat window by signing into your Google account and typing them in. Our technical director, John O'Malley, will be monitoring the chat and will try to pass along your questions. If we don't get to your question tonight, please feel free to follow up to, and with the email techrecruit at purdue.edu and we will respond later on. Before we get into our discussion, I would like to ask each of our panelists to introduce themselves and tell a little about what you teach. Hello, Ken, let's start with you. Hi everyone, I'm Ken Burbank. I'm the head for the School of Engineering Technology. Thanks for joining us tonight. Hi, Ann. Ann, I think you might be muted. I'm not good with that. Um, Anyway, my name is Ann Luciano. Um, I am a professor at in engineering technology, and um, I generally teach fluids, power plant things, and stuff with thermodynamics. Um, I like to do a lot of fun stuff. That's why today I actually have my Disney Purdue shirt on. We do all kinds of good things in engineering technology, and we tend to be pretty relaxed, um, but we learn a lot of stuff, and we get to uh, dig in and and try new things and basically push the envelope a little bit to see what else we can learn. Thanks. Hello, Brittany. Um, introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Brittany Newell and I'm an associate professor here in the School of Engineering Technology. Um, I teach our freshman introductory gateway course. Um, so if you're in ET or considering ET, you'll have me for semester. Um, and we're looking forward to this discussion. Wonderful. Next, Grant. Hello, I'm Grant Richards. Uh, I'm also uh, a professor in the School of Engineering Technology uh, in the area of manufacturing. And so you would have me in courses ranging from industrial control systems, uh, process control, and industrial cybersecurity. Fantastic. Tim? Hi everyone, I am Tim Gresham. I am an academic advisor in the School of Engineering Technology. Uh, I'm thrilled to be a part of the panel this evening. Thank you. And Fred. Hello, I'm Fred Berry. I teach in the School of Engineering Technology also. I'm a professor. I teach all the capstone courses. Uh, so all of y'all probably have me for two courses in your senior year. So we have an integrated capstone. What that means is all the majors are in the same capstone course. So it's rather unique and all the projects are interdisciplinary. So nice to be here. Awesome. And uh, just to make sure I haven't forgotten any of the faculty or, or staff before we go to students. Did I get everybody? All right. So for our student panelists, would you please introduce yourselves? Tell us what year you are, where you're from, what your major is. And Alfonso, let's start with you. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Alfonso Morel. I'm a sophomore in mechanical engineering technology, and I'm from Massachusetts. Fantastic. Good evening, Jamie. <clears throat> Hi, uh, my name is Jamie Pride. Uh, I'm currently a senior studying mechatronics and robotics engineering technology, uh, and I'm from Crown Point, Indiana. Oh. I'm also from Crown Point, Indiana. Woo! Go Bulldogs! Oh Last but not least, Zach. Hi, my name is Zach Schreiber. I'm from Hammond, Indiana, and I am a PhD student in technology, but I've been at Purdue through my undergrad and graduate studies. Oh, impressive, thank you. So, okay, let's get started with questions uh, that we hear a lot. Um, this is probably the question we hear most often. Uh, Ken, so this one's for you. What's the difference between engineering technology and engineering? Yes, we do get to hear this one a lot. So let's start with one of the most fundamental parts of this, and that is what is engineering? And 
One of the big confusions is that when you talk to a, on a campus a confusion is that engineering is actually a profession. And there's multiple engine um, educational pathways to get to that profession. So just about all of us on this screen are engineers, but our pathways to get there have been very different. Um, and it doesn't have to be with a name engineering in the sense that physics majors can become engineers. Chemists can become engineers. So what what is it that makes us unique here in this School of Engineering Technology? It's not so much that our students are going to become engineers, but it's how they learn to get there. Our learning is much more applied, lab based. Uh, we say learn by doing experiential education. Almost every one of our courses has an associated lab with it. You actually get to use equipment that would be used in industry to learn the practical side of the theories that you're learning in lecture. As an instructor, it's a lot more fun because you actually get to do things. And so hopefully that helps, but it's very much an applied engineering education program. Well, it helps me a lot, um, but also we have questions about what kind of jobs do engineering technology students get when they graduate and do companies want to hire our kids? So again, another question that we get asked a lot but we also get asked this question a lot by industry because they want to come in and grab them all um, to the point where, I, I, as you heard earlier, Professor Berry teaches our capstone class. It's not uncommon for all of his students to be gone by spring semester of their senior year. So we like to tell employers, if you want to get to know our students, you better start talking to freshmen and sophomores before they're gone. Um, in preparation for this, I actually looked at one of the spreadsheets that our office of whatever for titles for our recent graduates. So I'll just read a few automation engineer, supply chain analyst, validation engineer, product engineer, mechanical test technician, mechanical engineer, quality management specialist, field engineer, quality engineer, commissioning electrical engineer. As I say, industry are the ones that get to assign these titles. Colleges get to determine what goes on your diploma. Industry are the ones that assign the name engineer. So hope that helps. It does. Thank you so much, Ken. Jamie, um, I know you might not be with us for the whole time, but we appreciate your thoughts on this important question. Uh, so let's visit um, with our students next. Jamie, would you please tell us about your interest um, in, hi in high school and how you first got to think about robotics and chose Purdue Polytechnic and robotics to study uh, megatronics engineering? Absolutely. Um, in high school, I had an interest in robotics already. Um, so I was on my school's VEX team since about seventh grade. Uh, so I started in middle school, uh, did it throughout high school. And um, one of the things that attracted me Purdue was their VEX team. Um, I knew that was something I wanted to pursue along with my major, uh, and that definitely drew me towards this university. Um, but another big reason um, I chose my major in this university was um, I knew Purdue was a really good university for engineering, um, and I knew robotics was an up-and-coming field um, that I could really find a lot of interesting jobs. Um, and since I already had been doing robotics, you know, why not? I already enjoyed it. Um, and then I chose engineering tech over engineering um, because I preferred the hands-on application. Um, I had been learning robotics by building robots and going to competitions and things of that nature. Um, and the class structure was very similar and I was able to learn uh, a lot more and a lot more efficiently um, while going through the polytechnic. Thank you. That's a great answer. Alfonso, similar question for you. What first got you interested in mechanical engineering and what inspired you to come all the way from Massachusetts and pick Purdue Polytechnic? Sure. So I was kind of blessed from a young age. I've, I've always known that I wanted to become an engineer. Um, I've always enjoyed uh, taking things apart, 
maybe putting them back together. Uh, you know, not always, obviously, successfully. Um, but you're right; it is it is a big jump going from the East Coast to the Midwest, going from high school to college. Um, I wanted to explore a different part of the country. Um, so uh, coming to the Midwest was definitely a culture shock, but I wanted to absorb new experiences. I wanted to learn about a different lifestyle. Um, and I just wanted to gain a little bit more perspective. Um, in terms of uh, Purdue specifically, um, you know, its reputation goes without saying, um, but I was attracted specifically to the polytech because I've always been a hands-on individual. And uh, I, I really liked the application uh, based nature of the MET degree. And I knew that I would be able to have fun while learning about my passion and then go and apply it in industry. Um, and that that was really attractive to me. Um, so, so far it's been going real well, really well. Um, but I, I understand that the, the difference between, when I was coming in, the difference between engineering technology and engineering I didn't really understand that very well. Um, so it's it's important to know the difference and it's just boils down to who you are and how you learn and what you like to do. Um, and for me, this is what I chose. And it's, again, it's been going really well. Thank you. Uh, and Zach, your story is a little bit different um, and a little bit longer than Jamie's and Alfonso's stories because you chose Purdue not once, but three times, right? Um, you're a PhD student now, but you also got your bachelor's and master's degree here. So besides being more lab-based and hands-on, um, are classes like the math courses and science courses different than engineering? You know, what made you decide to come into mechanical engineering technology and continue on um, within our college? Yeah, so I decided to stay just um, I've always enjoyed Purdue. I've always enjoyed the environment, the learning. And uh, as you know, we know Purdue is like an R1 Institute and it's very uh, into research and trying to be at the head of the game. Uh, for those of you who've never visited campus, like we have robots going around that bring you food. Uh, I don't see that very often in many colleges. So it's little leaps like that that have kept me here. Uh, in terms of like the classes, there is a little bit different in math. Uh, you don't do as much math courses, I would say, in engineering tech. We boil it down to this is essentially what you're going to need to know and use versus having to take everything uh, like you would for a math major, a math minor. But um, the nice thing about it is it allows you to take time and focus on what you're really interested in. So that's one of the reasons I did a graduate degree and specifically in engineering technology was it, I had more flexibility to take classes, not only in engineering, but also polytech. I've been able to take some like liberal arts class some economics classes that have helped uh, better make myself a more uh, broad person, a better well-rounded person to understand a topic from different uh, sides of the coin, essentially. And so I've always enjoyed that flexibility working with great uh, faculty and professors and Purdue's just always been home for me. So that's why I've continued to stay. Thank you, Zach. Um, and you've got all, um, all these people have great stories to tell, but, um, I would like to ask you why Polytech aspires you, um, and each and every student that comes here. We tend to focus more on men in STEM fields, but, uh, obviously you're a woman. Um, and why should more young women consider a career? or a major in engineering STEM and come to Purdue Polytech? That, that's actually a good question. And a lot of people have different answers. But one of the things that I think is very important is that if you look around at the faculty in our department, we have a number of women and they all come from very different places. Um, they have different experiences. Some people like me, lots and lots of industry experience. Others, lots of really good lab experience and all sorts of other things in between. We're all very different. Each one of us is very different. I think Brittany can attest to that. Um, you know, one of the things that I particularly like about the technology side is that we can have fun. You know, how many people would walk into a meeting like this and actually have a Mickey Mouse shirt on? 
you know, I'm not worried about it at all. I think it's great. I'll run around with it out on the street, you know. Um, but, you know, as far as women, we have um, sometimes we, we don't quite understand uh, what we're going into or what we're getting into. And um, it's nice to have that support group there. And there are quite a few women in uh, other students that are in the program who are always willing to help out. Um, we have a group that I'm, I kind of curate and send information to um, once a week or every other week whenever I get something new or interesting that the ladies in our department would feel comfortable with or maybe want to go try. Um, we do activities and we encourage uh, supporting one another. Um, we have guys who come to our programs and they and they enjoy interacting um, with the people in the group too. So, um, you know, there's just all kinds of things that we do to try to help each other out and just encourage support from within. Fantastic. What kind of things do you hear from women who are current students or graduated from engineering technology about ways that they've been prepared in, at Purdue um, and how Purdue's a welcoming place. So the the graduates that that I know and I've kept up with, which have been quite a few, um, they really feel like they've been super prepared when they actually launched into their career. They were ready for it. They knew how to handle themselves in technical situations. They knew how to speak the language. I think that sometimes is the most important thing. Uh, understand what someone's saying to you, uh, and be able to interact with that. We've also had a number of people who have. Um, taken different turns with their careers. They've done, you know, they've gone off and, and tried different uh, different things. I know one in particular is actually working on um, furniture, and that's something that you wouldn't normally think about coming out of an engineering, any kind of engineering, engineering technology, whatever program. It's not something that would be at the top of your hit list. I've got one young lady who graduated five years ago, and she's running a department at one of the large firms in the Indianapolis area. Um, you know, so, I mean, Whatever you put your head to, basically the degree opens the door. Coming from Purdue opens the door and coming out of technology opens the door even more. Definitely we're seeing our students getting picked up earlier and earlier in the school year. It's really kind of nice to see. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, Brittany, uh, we want to do everything we can to encourage everyone to pick Purdue, of course. Uh, so um, it's great to hear your perspectives. I'd like you to come, Brittany, I'd like to come to you for this one. There are a dozen majors in the School of Engineering Technology, but every engineering technology student takes at least one course together, and that's their first course. I'm thinking about your Engineering Technology 182 course. Yes, so um, when students first come to Purdue um, in the Engineering Technology program, they're all pulled together into our gateway course. And so we teach a little bit about each type of different major that we have and try to give students a good explanation on each to make sure that you know what you're getting into and that it's a wonderful fit for you. So we give you lab experiences, lecture materials, we have recitations um, where we'll help you through problem sets and, and working through lab experiences as well. Um, so you get a feel for the core areas of what engineering really is. Um, and it's kind of nice because we do have that interdisciplinary environment. Um, so students get to talk, like Ann was, Ann was discussing, communicate with you know, supply chain with robotics and mechanical with electrical across all of the disciplines, which coming from industry is a very key skill. Um, and then most students will actually come together again in Fred's class in our senior capstone. So it's kind of a um, cornerstone and then the final capstone event that occurs through our curriculum which is definitely unique. So what else can you tell us about plans of study for various engineering technology majors? And what are some similar um, things students are doing first year? Um, and when do courses start to get more specialized based on specific majors? Uh, and is it possible to double major or minor? Sure, I'd be happy to answer that question, Rebecca. As, as an advisor, okay. um, as you mentioned, we have over a we have a dozen different majors within uh, the School of Engineering Technology. Um, you know, ranging from audio engineering technology to robotics, uh, uh, where Jamie is, robotics and mechatronics. Um, and what we see is that a lot of students in that first semester, specifically, uh, share a lot of the classes together with Brittany's ENGT 182 class, that gateway course. 
Uh, I love that they all start together. And as she mentioned, they all wrap things up together uh, with Dr. Barry. Um, and so it's just, there's a lot of similar classes that they will see each other in those that first semester. But it's really neat that almost uh, right off the start though, that second semester, they start getting into some more specific courses where they can kind of dive into those interest levels that they have. Uh, it's very exciting to see them come, you know, especially in our building now in the new Dudley building, which you'll talk about where a lot of our labs are and seeing them come out of those labs. Uh, first of all, maybe a little overwhelmed because, you know, it's a lot of work, but also really excited because it's all this hands on learning uh, that they're uh, participating in. Uh, we do have a lot of students who do double majors uh, like Jamie with the robotics and mechatronics. Uh, that's a very common double major. We see a lot of students who will double major in audio engineering technology as well as electrical or computer uh, and electrical. And so there's absolutely opportunities uh, to, to double major, uh, to add minors to your program as well, uh, to continue to develop the program uh, that suits your interests and where you want to take it uh, professionally when you graduate from Purdue. Okay, awesome. And we have a question that um, is a good question for Tim to answer. Um, my son, so this is from father, is looking into audio engineering. Um, in all of our visits and sessions, we've not met one person who happened to be in audio engineering technology. Can you get into the major? How long has it been around? What are some career paths, um, et cetera? Sure. And, and, and I'm the first to admit, I'm still relatively new in the program. I just started in June, so I'm, I'm growing into it. Uh, but um, yeah, actually, it's one of our, I think it's one of our quicker growing uh, engineering technology programs. Um, a lot of, um, because the audio engineering technology, it falls under the overall program of electrical engineering technology. You're working with wiring, you're working with wireless uh, technologies, uh, things like this. And so there's a lot of overlap with that electrical, uh, but it also works hand in hand with um, with the theater department here at Purdue. And so a lot of our students are jumping in, uh, even in their second semester, they're doing uh, a sound studios course. Uh, they they start working on you know various productions um, uh, through the through the Purdue theater program, uh, and so there are plenty of opportunities um, through the courses uh, to get some of that hands on. Um, practical skills and knowledge that they're going to need to take it into various um, professional audio sound studio careers, even uh, whether it's working inside a sound sound studio or whether it's working in, in a theater uh, department, uh, running, running sound, making sure everything is you know top notch as far as the quality. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. And then we have a question for Ken uh, that this question is about minors and how are minors taught differently compared to majors? I don't fully understand that in the sense that the, the classes are the same. OK, so a minor, if you want, is a smaller collection of classes than a major. Uh, but it's it's the same classes. I mean, students. We may have majors and students with minors in the same course at the same time, so the material is exactly the same. It's uh, like Zach mentioned that he's taking classes from other departments around campus, so students can use minors to mix and match different flavors uh, to to add perspective to maybe what their major is. So it can be oh. something completely different, like entrepreneurism. OK, um, and then he also asked, can engineering technology be taken as a minor at Purdue? Um, and so I feel like uh, just maybe some clarification on exactly what the minor titles were be, because I think that that might help. Um, I sure, I, I have that pulled up right here, Ken, and I can share that. Okay, great, thank you. Um, the various minors that are available within the engineering technology program are, um, uh, first of all, electrical engineering. Um, you can receive a minor in electrical engineering technology, uh, supply chain engineering technology, as well as 
uh, a smart manufacturing enterprise miner. And as Ken said, it's just taking uh, where, wherever your major emphasis is, you're adding a handful of additional classes in that minor area, whether it's in electrical, smart manufacturing, or supply chain. Thank you so much. Um, so here in the School of Engineering Technology, we like to say it's the way that you learn and it's important. Um, so Grant, we are very proud of how much our students get to learn by doing. Um, we're lucky to have a brand new building uh, with state-of-the-art labs that just opened up for our students earlier this year. Would you please tell us about the Gateway Complex known as really Dudley and Lambertus Halls? Sure, I'd be happy to. It's, it's a very exciting time around here. Uh, very rarely do you get to go from working in a 100 year old building that has a, a great rich history and get the opportunity to start with a clean blank slate and design teaching facilities that are focused on really the careers of the future, not the careers of today or the careers of recently passed. Those careers that are going to be emerging here in the next few years and those technologies that are just around the corner. And so as we look at our facilities, we had an opportunity to really reach out and look at the latest technology and look where all of the new potential career paths were and make some really creative decisions in these facilities. And uh, it allows us to engage our students with technologies that are just around the corner. So when they go out and they graduate, they are going to be right at the tip of the spear. They will be probably the most knowledgeable people in a particular organization on these technologies because they, they've they learned them right as they've come out and right as companies are adopting it. It's, um, we host, it, the, the attention around these facilities has been amazing. We host industry visitors all the time and they come into our labs and it's amazing the response. They look and they say, wow, this is where we're planning on going. We're not there yet and yet we're seeing it here and they now get a, a really solid understanding that if they're going to go hire people to help make those changes in their companies and bring these technologies in, they need to come to us. And we hear this on almost a daily basis. And so this having the ability to really um, design new facilities gives gives our students a great advantage because um, we can really focus on on careers that that are going to put them really ahead of everyone else in terms of, of their experiences. Thank you. Um, would you like tell us more about your labs and what students are learning in your labs uh, starting this fall? Sure. Uh, as a, we have a number of labs, so the nice thing is um, in this large building that is the largest academic building on Purdue's campus, um, we have, uh, say, an outside share of the of the laboratory facilities within that. Uh, among those, I have uh, three that I'm working directly with. Uh, the first is the Industrial Internet of Things Laboratory. Uh, the second one is the Intelligent Process Laboratory. And then the third one is the Smart Learning Factory. And each of these are pieces that work together in developing a, a manufacturing ecosystem uh, that really is representative of what it would look like from end to end if you were going to build a product. We also have a, an intelligent foundry, so we can go from creating a casting of a part using advanced robotic pouring with analytics and machine learning that are informing that process to taking that part, bringing it in in conjunction with other technologies, whether it be smart sensors, whether it be uh, control, uh, compute, other types of devices, and then building a, pro a, a product in our factory using components that we've create, crafted in-house and learning how all of these systems communicate with each other and really that new important element that, at least in the manufacturing sector, is really changing what is going on uh, across the entire sector. And that is the role of data and how data is informing systems and how you take data from sources that maybe you didn't have before with smart, that you now have smart sensors, and you're able to apply things like machine learning and uh, large analytic models to this data and really get some new amazing capabilities. And so this is really where you get a chance to work with real devices and hardware and systems 
And then you get to do emerging and new technologies and apply these types of things together and really come up with new solutions that, that, that nobody's been able to do before. And so our graduates are going to get a chance to do this with real devices. And these are industrial grade. We, of course, we do start with kind of hobbyist devices that you would, you would find that are relatively accessible, but we very quickly get you up into devices that you would find out in industry that are the premier premier for the industry. So they wouldn't necessarily be the most um, accessible devices um, in, in some environments. So it, it, it's really amazing. So in the industrial IoT laboratory this fall, uh, we are going to start uh, MFET 230, which is our industrial IoT networking um, and systems course, where students will take a sensor and from that sensor, they will start to attach it to a computing platform. From that computing platform, they'll start to take that information and run it into control devices so they can perhaps control systems. Then they will take that information. They will store it on computers that are local and in databases, but they'll also send it up to cloud devices and they will be able to take that information and be able to make dashboards and analytics and focus on um, the flow of data anywhere in the world from a small, tiny sensor that could be temperature, pressure, or any of these other types of physical properties. Along the way, they're also going to learn that when you start to connect these things, there are some security challenges here. You can't just plug things together and expect that um, things are going to work properly or that nobody's going to try to do bad things. Uh, you need to be careful when you do this, and so they're going to learn what you need to consider when you start to build these systems. And really, when you look at the news cycle and you hear some of the things that are going on out here, part of the skill set that we bring to bear is, yes, there are technologies, but you need to use those judiciously um, to get these new solutions. So we're really excited about what well, we I can really to... tell. I think <laughs> you're so excited. It shows all over your face. And um, I personally love this building. Alfonso, what's your favorite thing about being able to do projects in Dudley and Lambertus? Sure. I think uh, Professor Richard uh, elaborated very well on the various types of equipment we have. Um, but I will say just being able to interact with really, really expensive equipment and, and state of the art equipment has been uh, almost an invaluable experience. Um, right now, uh, I'm taking Professor Richard's class intro to uh, industrial controls, uh, working with uh, programmable, programmable logic controllers, um, hands on in lab. Um, and for me, that experience is going to be really relevant uh, because I'm doing a co op in the fall in a manufacturing environment. Um, so again, it's, it's invaluable experience. And what's really cool is that the companies are, are involved in the lab. They're, you know, we're using their equipment, we're using their software and it's going to be extremely relevant when we immediately go into industry. Um, so it's, it's been a fantastic experience so far. Thank you so much. Jamie, similar question. What do you like most about Dudley and Lamb Lambertus halls? What I think I enjoy the most is the study environment that that building has. Um, I know on the fifth floor, there is a study room that is open most days um, towards the evenings. Um, and there is always a lab TA in there. And they're willing to help you on any homework from any assignment. Um, and they were put there because they were knowledgeable about general things. Um, and you have that entire lab space to work on your lab projects or any other homework you may need. Um, and a lot of the professors are already in that building. So if you need to use their office hours, you're already there. Um, not only that, but there's a lot of individual rooms that you can utilize with groups. Um, and those have computer screens that you can use. You can work on presentations together. And a lot of the walls have whiteboard paint on them. So you're able to write on them when you're doing all those hard equations and things like that. Um, so not only is um, all the industry good there, but from a student perspective, it's, it's just a wonderful place to do your homework with your other techies. Fantastic. And um, jumping on that, we have a question from Nicole and she asks, are there any study group session organized through Polytechnic School for each class? And is tutoring available for all classes or just for larger ones? Um, I can speak to that myself a little bit that um, in our office, we have a best program uh, where we students can come in and request tutoring 
and also request some mentoring and guidance. Um, and we do a lot of math tutoring. Um, but I will also turn it over to the panel of experts within SOET uh, to answer that question about tutoring um, and support. Let's go with Tim. Sure. Yeah, and, and that's something that we, uh, as advisors, we certainly encourage students to, to connect with BEST. Um, as Jamie mentioned, this new uh, in Dudley Hall, the, the open lab uh, that is available has been a tremendous tool for our students. And I know a lot has been uh, invested, not just in the equipment, but also in the personnel to be in that room to help students uh, in a number of different topics, not just uh, whether not just electrical engineering or anything like that, but a variety of topics. Uh, we also do encourage our students um, when they come to, to us and say, hey, I'm struggling with this class. You know, we, we encourage them to reach out to their instructors because what we found is that most of our instructors will will engage with them and they they love to engage with students on a personal level and say, OK, you know, I'm struggling with this concept. Could you give me a little clarification? Uh, but setting up those times to, to maybe go meet with a professor to find that extra extra bit of insight uh, that maybe is uh, is missing a little bit from their understanding. And so there are certainly opportunities to to find those stay groups. We also uh, encourage students within the individual classes that, OK, uh, find a group of people that you enjoy working together. And you know what? Somebody may be strong in one area and somebody may be strong in another. Uh, and so you can help each other out uh, and grow together as students. Awesome, thank you so much. I know that my son loves open labs and appreciates uh, the attention that he gets and the questions he gets answered within them. It really um, that helps that hands-on experience and that theory come together for him, um, who absolutely is a student in the School of Polytechnic School of Engineering. So uh, technology so makes me so happy and proud. Um, Zach, as a graduate teaching assistant, what's your experience so far with teaching courses for undergraduate students in this new building? And why should future students think that this building um, is a big deal um, and maybe even a reason to pick Purdue? Uh, well, kind of like Professor Richards talked about, uh, this building is brand new. It's got a lot of new equipment. I'm old enough where I actually was in the old building when I was in my undergraduate classes. And so I've gotten to see, you know, some of the old equipment that we used in my labs to whether like to cast an aluminum part, weld some things together, uh, do some hardness testing, work with PLCs, and the list goes on and on throughout the entire degree. And so one of the cool things is seeing the new equipment, getting possibly to work with it and understand how it's going to work. So when you go on to industry and work in industry like I've done in some internships, you already have a good understanding of how this these equipment work. And so that's a great experience that you sometimes can have uh, above sometimes in engineering. Some of those don't actually get as much experience with that equipment, depending on the major and the classes you take. And so that's uh, one of the greatest benefits I can say is the new equipment. And then uh, specifically, I teach an electrical class and all of the labs there have very similar equipment in this new uh, building, whereas in the old building, it was kind of some was newer, some was older, and it was very hard to go from one room to another and do work. Whereas now you can almost go into any room and do the same electrical experiment that you need to because the equipment is common. So that's been some changes that I've seen and what makes a difference, I think, for students in our in our college. That's super exciting. Our next question comes from Andrew um, and he um, is asking Ken what the student to faculty ratio is um, in the engineering technology department. So that's a, I realize that's a nice question and it's <laughs> those easy data points to compare perhaps, um, but it doesn't always tell the whole story. So for instance, here on the West Lafayette campus, we have about 1300 undergraduates and we have 50 instructors. So, you know, you could say, well, that's 26 kids per instructor. However, as we've said over and over, every one of our classes has an associated lab. Well, our labs are typically pinned at like between 12 and 16 students. So 
yeah, the lectures may be a little bit bigger, but the recitations and the labs are always smaller, much more intimate, much more, um, a lot more face time with the instructors or the teaching assistants. So this whole student to teacher ratio is, is a variable in the sense that uh, it depends on the class and the time. But everybody is going to be in a section with on the order of 15 kids, probably three times a week to be able to have face to face time with an instructor. Hopefully Thank you. That, that makes a lot. Time. That makes a lot of sense to me, Ken. Thank you a lot. Um, and then for Brittany, we have a question. Um, are freshman year classes just as hands on as classes in later years? Yeah, um, so I would definitely say yes, since we have the lab experience as well. In my course, students will they'll solder, they'll build circuits on breadboards, um, we'll use Arduino microcontrollers and do some programming. Um, we build little um, little tiny robots um, that they drive on little paths. And uh, we also do force tables. Um, we do we build truss bridges. So it's definitely a, a hands on environment. Um, we talk about those topics in our lecture environment um, and then do some of the engineering theory there um, and the and the math associated with it. And then we execute it in the lab environment um, in the freshman course. We don't go into as much depth. So um, in the later courses, you'll use um, the things that Grant and Zach have been talking about um, some of the higher higher level equipment and continue those basic concepts. But yes, it's it's still very hands on. Thank you. Um, and another question we have, um, and I'm going to shoot this one over to Tim. Um, how can Polytechnic Institute prepare students for a master's in mechanical engineering um, at Purdue? Um, also, uh, can you touch on doing graduate degree work in mechanical engineering technology? Um, I have very little experience. I'll be honest with you about with the with the graduate program. Uh, I know that our graduate program isn't specifically uh, in mechanical engineering technology. It is an in, we have an engineering technology master's program, um, and I would say that if you are, if that is your desire to move directly from mechanical engineering technology bachelor's program into the master's program, you would certainly uh, be well prepared to move right into that. Um, again, the classes that our students take are very hands-on, uh, very practical, um, but also based, as, as has been said several times, uh, based in that theory. Uh, the theory that they're discussing in class is then put into practice and, and applied uh, through the labs. Uh, and so uh, absolutely, I would say that our classes uh, certainly prepare students for graduate school. Awesome. Zach, can you elaborate on this some more since this is the path you chose? Um, how that you would go about that and how it prepares you for the master's and then PhD? So graduate school is a little bit of a step up, I won't lie. There's definitely some more uh, required of you with projects and stuff, but you get that experience in undergraduate. So. Like we talked about throughout the entire undergraduate degree, you will have classes that do labs and you get to work hands on and you'll do again a capstone project where you'll work with uh, industry and whatnot. And so I would say grad school is just another step up. It's just a little more intense, a little faster pace, but it's essentially the same, the same medicine, essentially just a little higher dose is what I'd say. And so I know I've never had, well, I'm not gonna say I didn't have a problem. I had to ask for help, but I've been okay adjusting to grad school just fine. And like I said, I've taken classes across the entire university here from engineering technology in engineering in ag econ. And I, you know, you're usually gonna have some struggle. I think we all don't know everything. It's part of the challenge is your willingness to reach and get help and ask for help, find the people like we talked about to work with and just use the knowledge that you gain from your practical experience. One thing I can remember specifically was I took a mechanical engineering graduate course in thermodynamics, which many people just would dread. And for me, at least, I enjoyed the class. I like thermodynamics. I'm weird like that. And when I was in that class working with other masters in engineering students who were from the engineering department and I was from engineering tech, a lot of the times I understood the problem a little quicker and got to pretty close to the result anyway, a little bit quicker than they did because of my practical experience, because of knowing, okay, this is how this works. 
in the real world and how we experiment it. So it should be something like this. So uh, the degree here has helped prepare me for graduate school. No problem. I've had no problems at all. Thank you so much. Uh, Brittany, this one's for you. Uh, there are computers available for students to use on campus, but if a student wants to bring their own computer, are there specific recommendations on what they should bring, how much memory it should have, um, and the like? Um, yeah, I get that question a lot, especially at the beginning of the semester. Um, so you're not required to have a laptop um, or a desktop in your dorm or apartment or wherever you're staying. Um, but if you want to bring one, then that's great as well. Um, I would say the only issues that I've seen are um, with, for example, Chromebooks with smaller memory. Um, we do have lots of available student software packages where you can get free or significantly reduced price um, on some wonderful packages. And um, when you do install several of those, it can add up um, in terms of memory. So I would encourage, I would encourage that as well. Um, in terms of brand, for the most part, there aren't issues with that. Um, and we do have basically a virtual environment that you can log into for most software packages. Um, and so that kind of alleviates the issue with Mac versus um, versus PC. Uh, but there are programs themselves that want that run on one better than the other. I will say that. OK, um, and that was actually a question that had come in for Alfonso if he wants to elaborate on that. Uh, a Mac versus a PC as a uh, student, what is your opinion? Yeah, so I, I'm a dedicated Mac user. I, I run that right now. Um, <laughs> so as, as uh, Professor Newell mentioned, there are virtual spaces in which it doesn't really matter what operating system you have. You can access the software using a virtual computer like remote PC. Um, but there are some classes that require you to run Windows programs native, so I've kind of run into that, and I will say that, um, and I'm a, a M1 user, so that's just the newest chip in the Mac computers, which means you can't run Windows um, as easily. Long story short, um, there are ways to do it though. So if you do own a Mac, I would highly recommend uh, using Parallels or Boot Camp to run Windows separately, and you have a lot easier time running your uh, your software for your classes. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, so, Fred, uh, we're talking about learning by doing in engineering technology at Purdue. Most students are required to do a senior capstone project, um, right? Correct. Right. Uh, would you li like to tell us about those? Um, what are some different hands on projects that students do? I know I've seen them and I'm just going to say they're awesome. <laughs> well, we have a. <clears throat> A wide variety, so I kind of like to say it's the it's kind of the hands on and minds on experience because what's going to happen is uh, we did a major transformation of our capstone about eight, eight or nine years ago to better reflect what industry is. So you're going to go into a multifunctional, multidisciplinary team when you graduate. Uh, so you're not going to be working in here's double E, here's the ME, here's supply chain area on it. So all our projects now are integrated together. So what that means is we may have students that are have teams of up to eight people, but that's because there may be requirements for like four to five different disciplines to do that project. For example, you may have double E and ME supply chain, uh, manufacturing automation uh, portion uh, on it. So what happens there is the students are quickly pushed out of their comfort zone for the simple reason is most of the classes they've had is the professor was kind of the master and commander of that, where the content expertise was there if you're doing a lab. So you always kind of knew maybe who you could go talk to on that. But if you're a double E and you're doing a more ME project, you're going to have to learn some new stuff. And the first thing we tell the students is, yeah, we're going to help you on these projects, but we're going to have to learn with you. So we don't know the answers on that. And that's pretty uh, telling on them. So we do projects from basically bending metal to making different guards where we're doing carbon nanotube alignment right now and everything in between. So we do a lot of computer-based modeling. We actually have a project going on right now where we're 3D printing optical fiber and how to do that and comparing that to what 
uh, optical fiber buy off the shelf on it. We also have a new set of noise canceling headphones that we're looking at specifically designed for construction and getting good results for those. We have a project going on where we have a spiking neural network, which is learning how the path function for following a line and proving itself. Um, we also have projects to where we have uh, gesture controls uh, for robotics to where you could come in and take control of a uh, robotic, uh, a robot or a manufacturing process just with your hand gestures uh, using either an AR or VR system or uh, another type of wearable uh, on it. So we have a, a huge variety of projects. We run about 40 to 50 projects uh, a year. So uh, we have uh, two starts to Capstone. One is a fall spring. And that has about 180 students going in it right now. And then we have a spring fall that has about 60 students going in it right now. All the projects are industry sponsored, but all the projects are also for the learning. But also what's happening is we were get a lot of the students end up getting intellectual property off their projects, patents, trademarks, copyrights. We just had, we get about three or four a year on that. So we got two more that are in a process of getting those. They also end up getting conference journal publications. That's not the intent of the project, but that's just kind of a, an outcome of it. So it's a pretty cool experience. I mean, I like teaching everything from DC to light. I would get really bored teaching circuits all the time. I really like the job I got. Thank you. Um, and then can you tell us a little bit more about how um, they're hooked up with these industry partners? Yeah, we go out and get uh, caps uh, companies to sponsor all the projects. Uh, so we'll have some companies will sponsor more than one, but about 30 to 40 companies. So what happens is it's a two semester capstone deal. The companies are very involved working with the students. Uh, and then the students are making site visits. We've got several projects going with Amazon right now. And we got uh, a couple of projects going with Honda and Subaru. And all those kids have already gotten offers from those companies. They have to go remind them, you still have to graduate. So we need we need to get the project done and stuff like that, but it's not uncommon for a lot of our students to get offers from their capstone companies on it. Now that doesn't mean they all take them because they get offers from other companies too, but it's 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 a high uh, likelihood that they would get a an offer. Awesome, um, and then working so closely with these partners um, and solving these real world problems that must that's what you're talking about that's what really helps these kids get jobs and yes. and get in the field correct correct well yeah the thing is that it's actually the closest thing they can do to having a what i kind of call parallel in the workplace you know if you can't have an internship or co-op are great but not everyone could get one and this pretty much parallels the workplace and the students are having to meet a deadline they're having to meet a client uh, which is their, their, their industry mentor. They have to deliver. They have to like have, here's the reason the problems you're having. And even if the project takes a sideways turn and doesn't quite work out the way that we intended, uh, the students learn a value lesson. So long as everyone was involved in all the decision-making, everyone was involved with here's what's going on with the project, it generally ends well because a lot of times the company sponsor may have realized, oh, that was probably not a suggestion I should have made on it. Or we learned that that idea didn't work on it. So we we have really good outcomes, but the, the important thing is there, they have to learn how to work together as a group, as a team, uh, mutual respect, and also, you know, you know keeping the client in, in the loop. And I would say for the most part, our, our kids are great. They, they do a fantastic job. Uh, I mean, they're, I'm very proud of all of them. That's wonderful. Um, we have a couple more questions. One's for Tim, one's for me. So we'll start with Tim. Um, how easy or difficult is it to switch majors from um, either to another polytechnic major or to another college like engineering or science? Sure, that it, it's kind of a loaded question. Uh, it's relatively it within the polytechnic um, 
you know, it, it it's relatively easy, uh, especially within engineering technology. Say, for example, you start started as an electrical engineering technology major and you want to sw switch over to mechanical. Sure, we can do that. There may be some courses that may need to be retaken um, and things like that, uh, but it, it's it's significantly easier. Um, in order to um, uh, to change your major over to a different university, say you want to to go to uh, the College of Engineering, uh, we would uh, set up what is called a CODO request, a change of degree option, uh, and that would then. Uh, the sooner you let your advisor know that this is something you're considering, the better. Uh, that way, we as advisors can begin to uh, encourage you to take classes that would uh, easily set you up to succeed in your new major, uh, whether you're transferring to uh, first year engineering. Um, and so we would need to make sure you take specific math courses that would work at first year engineering as well as within engineering technology. Uh, same thing when it comes to your physics courses, your, your chemistry. Uh, the sooner you let your advisor know that this is an option or something that you're thinking about, the better. And we're absolutely uh, willing to work with you uh, to help you achieve that as long as you're willing to do the work of uh, making sure your grades are in a position where you can where you can uh, make that uh, change of major. Thank you. Um, and I actually have a quick comment to make on that. My son um, always wanted to be in energy engineering, but he was trepidatious about what that meant versus civil engineering. So he took those really hard um, additional classes for engineering and he said he regretted it forever because he put himself through additional torture that he did not need to do because he loves polytechnic so much. Um, and was uh, the, the decision to stay within our college was easy for him. Um, so here's the question for me. So if you've not, if you've accepted your offer and you've paid your deposit, can you still attend upcoming Purdue visitation days for admitted students? You absolutely can. Um, that being said, it's going to kind of be difficult because they're all full. So <laughs> we have waiting lists that you can get on. Um, also, you can continue to check. I don't know if anybody else is a Disney fan. I know at least one person is on here panel. Um, it's kind of like when you want Disney reservations uh, and you just got to keep checking. You just got to keep checking all the time to see if somebody canceled um, and then kind of slide in there and get one of those dates. So. You can also um, visit on your own um, and make some arrangements with the Office of Admissions um, and call our office, contact us um, to come and ask us questions as well when it's not one of those days. But that's the best um, advice I can give you is to keep checking that calendar to see if somebody uh, cancels a produce for me. Uh, as of right now, they're full. So it's about time to wrap up, but before we go, I'll ask um, each of our panelists a question. Uh, what advice can you share with future students to be both happy and successful at their time at Purdue? And we're gonna start with Brittany. Um, my advice would be basically that this is your education um and and your decisions so to to own that um we all want you to succeed and we all want you to get the degree and the future career that that is your dream job um and so we're all here to help you do that um so don't be afraid to reach out to us talk to your instructors and to to own your pathway at purdue uh ken how about you i think to echo what Brittany just said the motto for this college is students first in all we do. And we take that very, very seriously uh, from the design of labs to the design of the curricula to providing tutoring and mentoring. So it's all here. This is a big university. We've got everything you need to succeed, but you need to be the master of that, that process. So just have right, a good Zach. time. Oh, sorry, Ken, Zach. <laughs> Um, I think, you know, when you start at Purdue, obviously it's a big place. It's going to be, there's a lot going on. There's a lot you can choose from, not only with school, but extracurriculars. Just find what you enjoy. Um, don't be afraid to test the waters and get out there. Just, you know, remember you're here for an education first. And, 
you know, uh, if you're struggling, go ask for help. Go talk to your advisors, professors, whoever. And in the end, you know, just make sure that like Ken talked about, you know, it's all here and it's we're all here for you. And no matter what your choice is, just in the end, this is your education. Do what you want. I can tell you that I've been enrolled in some classes and decided to drop them or not go that route because I didn't feel that that was me. And I don't regret that decision at all. I'm very happy where I'm at. So just follow what you want to do. That's awesome. Grant? Uh, like I, I'll just echo what everyone else has said. Uh, uh, Purdue really is, it's a really large place that you can find a big group of uh, people that are doing things that you're doing, or you can find a small group. Uh, it's really gives you the opportunity to explore and try new things. And of course, if they're not fits, you have another opportunity right around the door. So you don't have to be um, hitting a dead end at any point. You can always find the next thing to go try out and uh, really make the most of that and find that balance between class and social. And really, it's a place to build your, your lifelong network that you'll come back to later on after you graduate. You'll have friends and you'll have colleagues that you'll run into again and again, and it's really just make the most of those opportunities while you while you have them. That's awesome, Anne. I think the most important thing is to keep in mind that you can do anything you put your own heart into, and if this is what you choose to do, there's so many opportunities to do it. So many others that are doing the same thing, and all of us have been through it already. So you can come to pretty much anybody that's been here and ask whatever questions you want. Thank you. Alfonso. Yeah, uh, I just wanna echo, just take advantage of what Purdue has to offer. Um, I wanted to also shout out, I had uh, Brittany Newell freshman year, uh, Zach last semester and uh, Professor Richard this semester. Um, the you're surrounded by people who want you to succeed and take advantage of those approachable professors and start networking. Um, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty when you're going from high school to college. That's, you know, regardless of the school, that's without a doubt. Um, but for me, day one was great. I was, you know, in lab burning plastics. I mean, it was cool. Um, so don't worry so much about, oh, I have to get an internship, but take advantage of the career fairs and learn how to talk to companies and start networking. They're gonna approach you or you're gonna approach them and they're gonna say, okay, what do you got? And you have to like give your elevator pitch and you know, it's it's daunting, but it's a great learning opportunity. Um, find something you're passionate in, find an extracurricular. There's so much Purdue has to offer. Um, it's employers love to see demonstrated interest, but you also wanna do what you love and do what you're passionate about. Um, and just lastly, find a good group of friends, find people you care about, people um, who care about you. Um, and again, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And then I'm glad you mentioned that because there was a question about student organizations. And so has that helped you uh, make those connections? Absolutely. Uh, for example, I'm participating in Grand Prix. I did it last year, I'm doing it again this year. So I've, uh, heck yeah. So. Um, I've, you know, gotten to know a great group of people and, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll probably know them for a really long time. So it's been great. What is Grand Prix? That's a really good question. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, every single year, uh, Purdue hosts the, the Purdue Grand Prix. Uh, we have a track on campus. In addition to an airport, we have a racetrack. So that's the reason I came to Purdue. If you're wondering, that's a real reason. Um, uh, and. It, they're just go-karts so it's not like cars but go-karts they go really fast around the track um, and student organizations residence halls uh, will put together a team um, the biggest challenge for grand prix is passing tech, tech inspection and then from there it's just racing and you know just going as fast as you can it's a wonderful experience i would highly recommend i won last year i'm going to win again so <laughs> that's the plan but um yeah, it's, it's a great experience. So definitely get into that if you're interested. And if I can add the Grand Prix, my husband's a Purdue grad. He was a driver and that whole group got together last October. Nice. And it was many decades ago. So it, that really is true. It does, it does make it up. That is fantastic. Jamie, can you jump onto that too with some of your organizational experiences with like uh, uh, 
professional fun organizations, what would you recommend to students? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So um, when I came at Purdue, uh, I knew there was going to be a thousand and one clubs. Uh, first thing I did was I went, um, it was the, the Boiler website that shows all of our organizations. Um, boiler link, or I forget, I believe it's that, yeah. Um, and I, I searched through the thousands and thousands of organizations, and I made a list of all the ones that interest me, and I found ones that were academically based, and ones that were just fun, because that's a really important balance. Um, but you are here to get an education, you can only do so much studying before your brain gives out, so it's, it's fun to go to those fun clubs to give yourself a break um, between study sessions. Um, so when I did that, uh, I ended up going, you know, on the VEX team. I knew I was doing that, and that definitely helped with my academics. Um, I did women in technology, which was academically based, but they also had social events. Like we went to um, the pumpkin patch that's close to here that has the maze and things like that. And we all got to paint our own pumpkins, and it was very, very fun. Um, so student organizations are really good for helping you expand not only academically, but socially. Um, and it really helps you find who you are, because um, that's an important part of college as well. Awesome. And I know you mentioned VEX, and uh, because I'm a first person, I wanted everyone out there in, in FIRST Robotics to know that we also have a FIRST program at Purdue. Um, and so if you are into that, uh, that's that's out there too. Um, so we're going to ask Tim next. What do you think uh, can help make freshmen coming in both happy and successful? Um, honestly, the, the first thing, uh, just every, everybody else has already said everything that needs to be said, in my opinion, uh, but be prepared to work. Um, it's college and, and it's not uh, a cakewalk. Uh, you may have breezed through, through high school in certain areas, uh, but college is different. Um, and again, it, it's your education. Um, you know, mom and dad aren't standing over your shoulder, making sure, OK, have you got all your assignments in, um, you know, own it, uh, be prepared to work. Uh, but along the way, there's so many opportunities to have fun, uh, whether it's watching uh, a 25 time Big Ten champion basketball team, a brand new football coach with an updated, renovated stadium coming uh, or finding your smaller you know, group of friends that you're just hanging out with. Um, so many opportunities, uh, but you know, be prepared for a different experience uh, than high school. Thank you. And finally, Fred, what do you got? Well, I think uh, everyone's kind of said it all, but you know, I would kind of reiterate, you know, make sure that you uh, realize 100% of your faculty want you to be successful. And we're here just to service you. There's no other reason for an institution like Purdue to exist other than to serve our students uh, on that. So, I mean, realize there's so much help if you need it, but also uh, like everyone else, you know, find some fun things to do uh, on it. Uh, but yeah, I would say, just remember, we're all here to help you. And that's the reason we're here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that concludes our discussion tonight. And thanks again to all of you for watching, for submitting your questions. Uh, we sincerely hope you learned something new about the School of Engineering Technology at Purdue. Uh, thank you to our all-star panelists for joining us and sharing their wisdom and experience. Um, if you joined us late, be sure to watch the replay because we talked um, with even more professors earlier in the hour. Um, thanks to as well to John, our technical director, for all the behind the scenes work that I couldn't do. Um, and D Diane Rosell for helping answer questions in the chat room. So um, she is the person that did that. If you ask, ask questions and she answered you quickly, um, she is a champ. So as I mentioned before, please feel free to send us an email at techrecruit at purdueedu. If you have any additional questions for us uh, about engineering technology at Purdue, um, you can also call our RD office um, and ask those questions. We hope that you will join us for one of the more upcoming events for admitted students, including Produce For Me, which we talked about is full, but <laughs> keep checking, um, which is an opportunity for your uh, family to visit campus. Again, you can also arrange things um, outside of that.
There's also many online information sessions to come like student to student chats. You can find information for all of these opportunities on our admitted student information page. You may like to see one or more of the other YouTube broadcasts. Coming up in April 12th, there's a YouTube broadcast that will focus on student life at Purdue for all students admitted to polytechnic majors. Replays of recent broadcasts focusing on women in technology, diversity at Purdue, um, and within Purdue Polytechnic are also available. All broadcasts are listed online at polytech.purdue.edu slash live. Um, just a quick reminder, the deadline to accept your offer of admission is May 1st. Um, thank you again for joining us tonight. Have a great evening and boiler up. <laughs>